Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Space Acacia air floor. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So this is an inflatable floor that's meant to complement the Space Acacia pop-up tent. So this can give you insulation from the ground from either heat or cold. You can also use this to float the tent on a pond or small lake. Now they do say in the manual that you should not sleep in here and you should always keep the door open when you have it on water. So let's get this open. I'm going to cut this open with a knife, but I'm going to be super careful not to go into the packaging just in case. Okay, so there's a second box inside. I'll pull this out. Okay, here we have like the retail box. It says comfort, waterproof, and moisture proof, strong support, use on water. This talks about three components of the Space Acacia system. You have the canopy, tent, and floor. So if you want to see my other videos on the other components of this, I'll put a link below to those videos. So let's get this package open now. And I'm going to actually take this out to where I'm going to be inflating it. Looks like we have two bags here. This bag has rope, it looks like a tether, and this would be the carpet. The instructions are in the end pocket here. Pull those out. We also have some patches. And here's a notice that you need an electric pump to inflate the floor, and you can use the Acacia pump or another pump so long as it can get to 8 PSI. So I'll be using the Acacia pump, and if you want to see my video on that, I'll put a link below in the description where I go into more detail on that, but I will show it in this video to inflate it. And here we have the manual, let's look at it. So here we have a little pamphlet, talks about the Space Acacia system, a bunch of different colors there. This talks about the air floor. So you want to read through all the instructions so you know how to use this properly. So this is what it comes with. We have the manual, bag, carpet, carpet bag, safe Safety rope, it's a scented craft, looks like binding loops, repair patches, and valve wrench. And then we have the floor, we have the air valve, so there's the main chamber, and then the limit ring. This talks about inflating it, so it says hand pump or electric pump. We saw that little tab that recommended an electric pump, so that's what we'll be using. And then you need the suitable connectors for hooking it up, so it has a locking connector for the floor and this other connector for the limit ring. So this talks about inflating the floor. It says unroll it on level ground with the air valve facing up, connect the pump joint and valve, then start to inflate, pump the floor to the target air pressure, then put the valve cap on. So it says use 5 to 8 PSI for the floor, do not exceed 10 PSI, and then for the limit ring, do not exceed 3 PSI. This talks about using it with a space acacia tent. It says set up the tent and remove the ground mat, put the tent onto the floor, make sure the tent is fully enclosed in the limit ring. Then it says connect the corresponding hooks to the O-rings on the tent's corners, adjust the straps to keep the tent tight, fasten the floor to earth by nails through the O-rings on the strap. Stick the Velcro of the floor and tent, adjust the position to make sure there's no gap, finally lay out the carpet. This talks about using it on water, so you can use this alone or with the tent. When you're using it on the water, they say you need to have it secured to something. So here they have a boat, here they have a tree. Do not use this on the sea, do not exceed safe load. So this is not an ocean dwelling vehicle. This would be more for like relaxation, maybe some exercise. Although it does say down here, keep the tent door open and do not exercise vigorously. So you might do stretching. You're obviously not going to do like heavy cardio on this and do not spend the night on the water. This talks about deflating it. It says remove the valve caps and the limit ring. Let them deflate for a while, connect the pump and pump the air out of the floor. This talks about folding it. So you fold it along this short flat area perpendicular to it on either side and roll it up and put it in the bag. Make sure you have the valve open while you're doing this. And this talks about the valve wrench. So if the valve is leaky, you can tighten it. And this talks about fixing the tears. And this FAQ talks about keeping it inflated for an extended period. So this isn't meant to be left on a lake all summer. You want to put it away when you're not using it. So let's get this out of the bag. Now there are some instructions sewn into the bag in case you lose them and has the pressure on here also. So there is some packing material on here, but I'm going to start getting this inflated. And while it's inflating, I'll work on the packing material. Okay, so here I have the Acacia inflator. Let's get this inflated. So I'll attach the hose to the inflate side. I'll get the correct nozzle. So I'll open the valve. And if you forget what to nozzle, the valve has a distinct shape that you can match up with the nozzle. So I'll screw that on here. I'll lock that into the valve. I'll turn the inflator on by holding down the power button. And I'll set this to 8 PSI, and then I'll hit power to start it. Okay, so we got the main base inflated. Now I set it at 8 PSI, but I dropped it down to 5. It seems plenty firm at 5. Now a neat thing about this inflator is it has a low and a high volume pump. So it uses that low volume pump to do the initial inflation. Then once it reaches the limits of that, it switches to a traditional air compressor. So that really speeds up the inflation. If it just used a traditional air compressor to do the whole thing, it would take a lot longer. So now we can do the ring and we'll do that at 1 PSI. And the inflator for it is over here. So this is completely open. I'll need to plug this. So now the check valve's installed, and I think I need this here. 
looks like. Yep. So I'll set this to one PSI. That's not very firm. I'm going to take it up to three. So now we can see the air floor completely inflated. Here we can see the bottom. Let me walk on this. So this is a relatively firm surface I'm walking on. There's a little bit of springiness to it. Now I did this at five PSI. We could put eight in here. That would probably make it a little bit firmer, but it feels very stable to stand on. So I'm actually running out of daytime right now. So what I'll do is I'll demonstrate deflating this and folding it up, and then I'll cut to putting the tent on it. So I demonstrated inflating it. Now let's demonstrate deflating it. I'll unscrew the air floor. And then you press down on this to deflate. On this one, we'll remove both caps. So I pulled this cap out, and then I'm going to pull this one out. So along with inflating, this can deflate. So we'll switch over to the deflate mode. We'll put the connector on, screw it in. We'll turn this on and we'll press power to start deflating. So it's exhausting the air out here. Okay, so I think I have all the air out of there. Okay, so I have this deflated. Let's get it folded up. Now this is my first time folding it, so be patient with me, but I can still see some of the crease lines, so hopefully I can kind of follow those. So that wasn't too difficult to fold up and get in the bag. If there's any difficulty, it's my first time doing it and I was a little unsure, but you just fold it like I folded it and then roll it up. And the nice thing is this is a big bag. I've seen tents and sleeping bags and such where the bag it goes in is two sizes too small on a good day and you have to really jam it in there. There's lots of room in here so it fits easily. So now I'm going to jump ahead. This thing will be inflated again and we'll get the space acacia tent on it. Okay, so I have the tent assembled over here. I have the floor here. I need to put the tent on the floor. Before I do that, I need to remove the floor that's in the tent. So I'm actually going to try and set it on top of here and then see if I can pull it out. Okay, so I tied the door open, so now I'll pull the floor out. So the floor was attached with Velcro, and then it had these little orange toggles and little orange O-rings. So you can match up the colors, and those were on each of the corners. So now this thing can come out. Now I want to set the tent on the outside of the ring. So it's kind of outside over here on the bottom left. On the bottom right, the ring is out. So I'll get it uniform all around the whole thing. So it has these rings here, and as I was lifting it, I just use those rings as little handles. So now I have these clips. I'm going to attach these clips to the stake loops. The other end of that strap has two grommets in it. That's so you can stake this to the ground. I'm not going to stake it to the ground right this second in case I need to move it. So I'm going to attach this all the way around. Then you'll want to tighten up those straps. Okay, those are all tightened down. Let's head inside the tent. So now I need to attach the Velcro. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to go, so I'll figure it out. Okay, so this flap had Velcro folded down. You just pull it up and I'll adhere it to the Velcro on the perimeter of the tent. Okay, I have that connected up all the way around. The next step is to install the carpet. So that's in this bag. And then we also had that rope. And this here is the tool for the air valve. So hopefully you don't need the rope if you're on land, but if you're on water, you can use this rope to tether it. So here's the carpet. You can see it up close. It has a soft fabric on it and a sort of plastic liner on the bottom. Okay, I got the carpet laid down. I probably took way more time than I needed to get it down. I wasn't sure how tight it would go. It mostly fits inside the inner perimeter of the limit ring. You can tuck it under just a little bit, but it doesn't stick under there very tight. So that's an overview of the Acacia Air Floor. So we went over airing this up. I only have five PSI of air in it. It has a little bit of give to it. I could up that to eight if I wanted it to be firmer, but I like how it feels right now. 
I may change my mind later. And then we connected up the Space Acacia tent. So I'd say it went together pretty easily, although this was my first time setting it up and I'm filming it. So this is going to go a lot quicker if I'm not filming it and I'll know what to do right off the bat. So this will go a lot faster for me subsequent times setting all this up. But even my first time, it was relatively straightforward. So if we walk around it, we can see there's a little bit of the air floor sticking around on all sides. And then if we go in, we see the carpet. Now, oftentimes when I've seen tents flood, it's because water comes in from the bottom. I can't imagine that's gonna be a problem with this. This is quite a few inches above the ground. And then you have that limit ring in there also. So that will keep rain from coming down the sides of the tent from getting in. It will also keep water puddling up around the tent from getting in. So I anticipate this is going to be a very dry tent. Now I don't have the rain fly on right now, but that would be assuming you have the rain fly on or the acacia canopy. So aside from keeping you dry, this should also keep you cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. Since the ground is solid, it's going to transfer the hot or cold much more efficiently than air. So since you have this air bladder under you, it's going to act as an insulator, which should make for a much more comfortable night's sleep. This also has this little porch area here. I anticipate if I had some muddy or dirty boots, I could set them on there so I don't have to track mud into the tent. And then we have that carpet in there, which gives you a nice soft surface for your tent bottom. So this could be good for overnight camping, or you could just use this for a daytime exercise or relaxation. And as it said in the manual, you don't want to do vigorous exercise out here but this could be great for stretching and such so that's all i'm going to cover in this video if you have any questions please leave them in the comments if you like this video please click like if you haven't subscribed to my channel i'd appreciate it if you could do that and thanks for watching until next time goodbye